You're watching the International Daily Roundup with People's Dispatch, where we bring you some of the major news developments from across the globe. Today's headlines, activists warn of arms race as the US, UK and Australia form military alliance. West African regional bloc imposes sanctions on Guinea's military junta. Enbridge Pipeline Company fined over environmental violations in the US and in our video section, we take a look at Brazil's agribusiness sector amid record levels of deforestation in the Amazon. Anti-imperialism activists have denounced the new military alliance between Australia, the US and the UK. The trilateral pact called AUKUS was announced on September 15th. The US and the UK will supply Australia with at least eight nuclear-powered submarines. Leaders have said that the submarines will not have nuclear warheads. Australia announced on Thursday that more US troops will be rotated through the country. The Allies will reportedly also cooperate on missile development and explosive ordnance. The US has already approved a $350 million missile sale to Australia. AUKUS has been viewed as part of President Biden's increasingly provocative stance towards China. China has warned that the pact is extremely irresponsible and could lead to a regional arms race. It has also accused the three countries of having a Cold War mentality and an ideological prejudice. AUKUS has been announced just before a meeting of the Quadrilateral Security Dialogue. It includes Japan, India, the US and Australia. The group was revived in 2017 to counter the so-called Chinese threats to freedom of navigation in the South China Sea. The economic community of West African states has imposed sanctions on Guinea's military junta. The regional bloc has decided to freeze the financial assets of military leaders and their relatives and impose travel bans. It has also demanded that ousted President Alpha Conde be released and elections be held within six months. The junta is currently holding talks with political parties, traditional leaders and mining companies. Guinea is the world's second largest producer of bauxite, amounting to one-fifth of the global supply. The price of aluminium, which uses bauxite, rose to a 13-year high following the coup. The result of the ongoing talks with mining companies, which include Russian and Chinese firms, remains critical. Meanwhile, the US Africa Command, the AFRICOM, has played a crucial role in the coup. Footage has shown Guinean soldiers escorting the American Guinean Berets back to the US Embassy after the coup. The Special Forces members had reportedly been in Guinea since July. They were training a unit led by now coup leader Colonel Mamadi Dumbua. The Canadian Inbridge Pipeline Company has been fined 3.3 million US dollars by US regulators. The company breached an aquifer during the construction of its Line 3 pipeline in Minnesota. The breach led to the release of over 24 million gallons of groundwater. The Minnesota Department of Natural Resources has referred the case to the Clearwater County Attorney. Enbridge will now face criminal prosecution for violating state environmental laws. The groundwater was released just as 86% of the state is experience, experiencing at least moderate drought. Clearwater County is located in northern Minnesota, almost all of which is under extreme drought. The Line 3 pipeline has already caused ex extensive environmental damage in surrounding areas. These include two major oil spills, including the one in 1991. 1.7 million barrels of oil flowed into the Prairie River, making it the biggest inland spill in the U.S. history. The Minnesota Pollution Control Agency has said that Enbridge has had at least 28 spills of drilling fluid in 59 days. This amounts to approximately 13,000 gallons. And for a final story, we look at the agribusiness sector in Brazil. Deforestation in the Amazon crossed 10,000 square kilometers between July 2020 and August 2021. President Jair Bolsonaro and his allies are pushing laws that will open public and protected lands to agribusiness and mining. Here is a video feature by Brazil de Fato on this issue. Against a backdrop of anti-environmental policies and non-republican movements, agribusiness seems divided. Supporting Bolsonaro while the herd advances or pressure him to adopt a more responsible attitude towards the environment? These are the internal differences opposing the two large agribusiness blocks of the country against each other. On the one hand, there are the meat and grain producers, led by the Brazilian Association of Soy Producers, also known as APROSOJA. They are among the funders of the anti-democratic and pro-government acts of September 7th. On the other hand, there are the transnationals that export commodities. They are linked to the Brazilian Agribusiness Association, also known as ABAC, which even published a manifesto defending democracy. A soja vem defendendo 
A prosoja has been advocating agendas that deepen deforestation in the Amazon. But recently, they spoke up for the time frame argument and for the armament of rural people, which has even become a slogan. There are topics that ABAG avoids. ABAG is an important representative of transnational and stateless financial capital. For sure, ABAG will align with the international market speech on sustainability, although we know that agribusiness can be sustainable under no circumstances. But the narrative created by Abai to connect agriculture with sustainability has had little effect on Minister Teresa Cristina and the deputies of the Agricultural Parliamentary Front. What the Agricultural Parliamentary Front demonstrates is unit in action. It shows that, regardless of the difference of economic corporate interests, the joint project is the same. The continuous regularization of illegal occupation in the Amazon, the flexibility of how lands can be taken from indigenous areas through mining initiatives and hydric activities, and the limits to demarcation of indigenous lands. Another factor is the rise of a discourse challenging the measures to tackle the climate crisis. This discourse was promoted in the US by Donald Trump. In Brazil, it was reverberated by Bolsonaro as soon as he was elected president. A proof of it is the restructuring of the weakened Democratic Association of Ruralists, which emerged in 1985 to curb the advance of popular rural movements such as the Landless Workers Movement. And this is all we have for this episode of the International Daily Roundup. For more on these stories, visit our website, peoplesdispatch.org, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thank you for watching.